Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Panchandra Planets July Integration Series, Episode Four: Arts in Education, Exploring Potential. Today we have with us the renowned artist and cultural ambassador of our country, Padma Sri, Dr. Geeta Chandran, and all the eminent educators across the country attending this uh, program. through youtube and live zoom channel before we move on to further proceedings of the session today's session's nature is just like of an interactive session very interactive session with mr binesh ke menon is the founder of prayag dance company and the principal of canadian central school ernakulam and our great artist patma sri dr geeta uh, geeta chandran is with us and we are trying to explore the potential of learning in correlation with arts and education and here my duty is to welcome vinesh ke menon a renowned artist symbolize integration of art and education he is a physics teacher and as dancer as well i would like to invite vinesh menon to moderate the session thank you vinemon sir good evening to everyone Shri Guru Bhyo Nama. And today's session, it's a wonderful session for me. It's an honor. And uh, now I remember one thing that happened in my career as a teacher years back. When I started my career, being an artist, being a dancer, some the dance had some influence in my gestures, maybe some expressions in the class. so at that time my students especially this higher secondary or secondary students they used to ask me a question like uh, raising their eyebrows hmm? so are you a dancer so at that time their question and the laughter that followed forced me to say no i hope you understood but later after all these years now we are here to discuss about how art could be integrated with curricular subject or teaching curricular subject so the time has changed everything so today this platform in this platform i'm feeling so happy and excited as an artist and also as a teacher and uh, the art has united all of us here in the platform of panchatantra planet and as everyone know panchatantra planet is an organization formed by a group of educationalists and uh, senior principal those who are having more than 20 or 25 years experience focusing on five sensorial learning that five sensorial learning concept and everything is very it's fantastic and for today we are having a very pop popular face somebody who symbolizes dance an embodiment of bharatanatyam patna shri geeta chandran and we all are waiting for her words so it's my pleasure to introduce madam and uh, i was going through her profile so uh, uh, i think uh, it may not be possible for me to explain everything within this short time but something from her life as a dancer from the profile but mr geeta chandran a celebrated artist and a star performer Geeta Chandran is synonymous with the Indian classical dance Bharatanatyam. She began learning Bharatanatyam at the tender age of five under the guru Shri Mati Swarna Saraswati. Subsequently, she was also trained by other eminent gurus like Guru K N, Dikshana Murthy Pillai, founder president of Nati Vriksha, where she teaches and promotes Bharatanatyam. Geeta is also artist director of the Nati Vriksha Dance Company. which has traveled all over the world with its superb dance presentations she mentors over 100 disciples who have learned bharatanatyam from her uh for decades a recipient of many prestigious awards fellowships and honors including the prestigious national padma shri award bestowed on her by the president of india kita is celebrated not only for her deep and composite understanding of the art bharatanatyam but also for her carnatic music her work in television video and film 
theater, choreography, dance education, dance activism, and dance issue journalism. Kita has been recipient of both the junior and senior research fellowships from the government of India's Department of Culture. She is recipient of several awards, including the Lady Sri Ram College Illustrious Alumna Award, the Dandai Dapani Pillai Award, the Bharat Nirman Award, the Natya Ilavarishi Award, the Indira Priyadarshini Award, the Media India Award, the National Critics Award, the Shrinkar Mani, and the Natya Rekma. And being a dancer or a musician, for my knowledge, uh, she has never isolated herself as an artist, but she has addressed a vast range of gender-related issues uh, from female feticide, marriage and dowry, women and war, women in communal situations, and women as victims of human trafficking and terrorism. Her dance activism has won her equal praise. So with pleasure, with honor and gratitude, I would like to welcome Patna Shri Gita Chandran to this session. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you, Vinesh. And I welcome all board of members of Panchatantra who plan and make each and every training program happen successfully to this episode of, yeah, fourth episode of integration series. Welcome everyone. And this event is for all of us, all the teachers, everyone. And only the teachers, the vice principals, the principals, the coordinators, all of those who have uh, joined here in this session will make this this particular event a milestone in the history of the series of webinars conducted by Panchatandra. So from the bottom of my heart, with the love, uh, I welcome each and everyone who have uh, joined here in this session. Uh, and uh, I, I'm expecting, I wish everybody would be getting a, a lot of information or a lot of idea regarding art integration in curricular subjects for education. So welcome all. Now, Misha Murli Tharan, senior educationalist, well known for his expertise in gamification and a Panchatantra Planet board member. I would like to invite him to speak about the coming up sessions in July. Sir, please. Binu sir, he said to come. You can carry on, Binu sir. So Panjandra Planet is coming up with uh, various sessions with luminaries from the field of education. And our leadership series in the, in the August, because uh, July, we have celebrated our integration series related to art mainly. And here, Anurag Tripadi, that is our episode one leadership series, August 2021. The first session is the renowned, reputed secretary of CBAC, Anurag Tripadi. It's based on instructional leadership. I request everyone to block your date and attend this session. It will be very valuable based on the current scenario. A CBSE in the path of reformation, assessment system has been drastically changing. So this is the right time to listen to him and to modify our style of leadership. And the next program, it is also related to leadership series. That is episode two. Major General Bhupesh Jain is a motivational speaker and he's having an extensive experience in the field of education and he's a part of our military force. So we are going to listen to the power of leadership from Major General Bhubesh Singh, Bhubesh Jain. So I would like to block your date and uh, uh, register yourself in advance so that we can avoid unwanted traffic in the registration link. So we will close the link in advance so that we can send invitation to everybody in advance. You will get a, a mail from us, from the Panchandra Planets administrative body. You will receive a mail so that you can remind yourself. We know that most of the people will register in advance and they'll forget the date. So we'll send you two mails at the time of registration and just before the program. So please note yourself and join this program. It will be very useful and you'll get a very different perspective regarding leadership. And we are coming to the next program. Uh, 
that is leadership series episode 3 sri chandrachur ghosh and he's an author is a famous author and he's an author of a controversial book called kenantram it is a regarding the disappearance of subhash chandra bose netaji subhash chandra bose so we are going to conduct a program uh, which is uh, focus on students and students involvement and uh, so many students across the country are participating in this program and it is just like of a conversation mode it's a discussion mode so this program definitely will enrich our students community and will get an enlightenment regarding major uh, subhash chandra bose and his disappearance and the author itself is coming and interacting with the students on the particular day so i would like to all the leaders or uh, principals and senior principals uh, vice principals administrators please inform your students also to be a part of this program so you'll get more idea about india's vast history freedom struggle and all these are the major programs which we are planning in the month of august i would like to join this program and enrich yourself at the same time help the teachers to explore new possibilities of learning thank you all thank you sir yes. now this is a time it's a time for all of us have been waiting for to listen from a legend a legendary dancer and artist patma shri geeta chandran so i request ma'am please uh, share with us your views your experiences as an artist and how this art forms could be integrated incorporated with the so called education system of the present uh, india ma'am please namaskaram i hope i'm audible okay i uh, thank panchatantra planet for this uh, wonderful opportunity uh, to put me in a spot actually because it's easier to dance it's easier to sing than to talk because uh, uh, talking doesn't come as easily as dancing but um, however today is my perspective is totally one of uh, that of an artist who has been uh, learning dance since the age of 5 i have been learning and i'm still a student i believe and as a performer a choreographer and then a teacher i've been teaching for the last 30 years at natya viksha and that in that capacity is what my observation today is going to be and um, it was interesting when binesh said that um, he want didn't want to disclose the fact that he was a a teacher when they asked him about his expressions and about the raise of the eyebrow or uh, any other mannerisms that uh, is obvious when a dancer speaks or a dancer even stands or moves because we are trained in a certain way uh, it's uh, it's strange because uh, recently i was asked to speak on a webinar uh, to teachers and to tell them how they can use dance or the expressions in order to make their zoom sessions more effective so i think we've come a full circle where in a class you actually need to hide the fact that you are a dancer and here you are actually telling people how to use expression so that your zoom sessions in class are not boring and children don't um, you know shut their videos and go away so you need to be animated you need to be a wonderful communicator if you want your zoom sessions to be engaging and you want them to you want the students to so i think that itself teaches you or tells you that integrated learning that learning has to happen at all levels learning cannot be just based on the syllabus or just on what you are meant to learn every time you have to push the frontiers of what you do in order to make yourself special in order to make yourself somebody whom the children look forward to hearing or learning from what do you really mean by arts in education because i really did not mean learning the syllabus through the arts 
I think that's a very simplistic way of explaining arts education. Arts education in the formal structure as we know the structure of education in India, is it possible to integrate the arts in a seamless way in the existing pedagogy? I mean, that is what the challenge for me has always been because we came from uh, a generation, I believe, where the home environment was very strong and we learned whatever we learned very formally and in a very structured way outside of school. And school just celebrated what we did outside of school. That was a great, great thing that the school did because the school and college is what ultimately gave me the conviction to leave everything and come back to dance because I did mathematical statistics in Lady Sri Ram College. So my formal education has been a very strong part of my education and uh, coming from a family which believed in formal education. I was the first one to learn dance and to uh, seriously take it up, uh, but still taking it up as a profession was seen as something very, very impossible. So I had to do my formal education. And then my father said, yes, you've done your graduation. I think you should also do your master's and then take a call on what you want to do with your life. So it's like a security. The formal education becomes some kind of a security because the arts still have uh, a lot of uh, uncertainty associated with it. So I think that's my, and that's been my journey, but my school and college have given me a lot of strength and courage to make my own decisions and to, they have always encouraged me in pursuing the arts. Though I must tell you this interesting story, when I went back to school after many years, I was already known as a dancer and uh, my maths teacher asked me, so what do you do now? So I said, I am a dancer. She said, yes, that I know that you are a dancer, but what do you do? So even the idea of taking up the arts as a full-time profession was unthinkable in uh, my time. So I think that is where we've coming from. And today we are talking about integrated learning. We are talking about arts being co-curricular and not really extracurricular, the way we used to always be addressed as, and we used to always be told by the subject teachers that, okay, okay, go, keep on doing your rehearsal and your dance, and you can fail in your physics or in your maths. Mm -hmm. And they never added, the subject teachers never saw any value in the arts. I think that brings me to a very crucial point as to what is the current situation in an average school and what, how is the arts viewed and what is in the hierarchy of things? Where does the arts community or the arts department stand? I think it will be the lowest in the rung. It would be, you know, English, history, and then all the sciences. And then maybe right in the end, there would be something put for the arts. So I think that is how the hierarchy is in the schools. And the child perceives it very quickly. So the child also understands that arts is something that you do, it's okay if you don't do even better. So it's not reflected in the report card. So what is it? How does the child understand what you get from the arts? So this is something that the reality on the ground where I have been in the board of many schools. I have been helping many schools come up with the arts curriculum. I have tried to take to, in a sense, adopt a school in Faisabad where I try all kinds of things uh, and experiment with the arts education program. And I have seen that largely, if you see in the schools, what is the mandate of say a dance or a music teacher? Many of you would know much more than I do, but my experience has been in North India and I have been regularly going for Spikmake uh, in all the North Indian states across rural urban uh, uh, schools. And, I've, and wherever I go, I very, very keenly observe and watch and talk to the different teachers and understand their perceptions as to how they view arts and arts education. And largely what I have seen is 
the mandate of the dance or music teacher is you do events particularly you do 15th august 26th january a diwali event and a and an annual day that's a big thing there's an annual day and uh, they take pride in saying many schools take pride in saying we we had 600 children participating in our annual day and when you ask one child what did you do i stood like a tree here that is the tokenism for arts for that child and that's what that child remembers through school that this is what i did for my arts this is the reality in which we are functioning and this is what the mandate of an arts teacher largely in the schools is so <laughs> i mean it makes me laugh because in this kind of a situation what is the learning outcome because this learning outcome the you know assessment all these are terms which are being thrown at even in the arts however intangible the arts might be you are still wanting to have all these learning outcomes and how do you evaluate what they have learned in the last uh, uh, semester all these things are asked because in the school that i go to in fezabad there is the old guard which says that keep pumping into the arts keep giving the arts we'll see what comes out of it and there is the younger generation of the management which comes and says oh we are spending so much in the arts what is happening how are we going to evaluate this how do we know what's happening we have to have a way of mechanism of evaluating this we have to see what is the learning outcome i have to say that arts you really cannot use the same yardsticks what you use for physics or for chemistry or for maths as you know learning outcomes and yardsticks because arts is something which is full of rasa now can you can you can you when i speak can you say what is the percentage of rasa that i am using while i'm speaking i mean rasa is rasa it's an experience so i just feel that the arts you have to be giving and giving and giving and ultimately you will see that there is something beautiful that comes out so these kinds of parameters really cannot be used in the arts <laughs> now the first thing when i went to that school is i asked the, the teachers to introduce themselves and uh, as is normally done i am the kathak teacher the other one said i am the tabla teacher somebody else said something else. so i said is there a performing arts department here can we introduce ourselves as belonging to the performing arts department amongst themselves there is no interdisciplinarity you see the music teacher doesn't know what the dance teacher is doing the dance teacher necessarily doesn't know what the theater teacher is doing and the theater teacher certainly doesn't know what the visual arts teacher is doing now we talk about a culture where if you go to a temple from the beginning there is the flower seller who is selling this beautiful technique of todukkafying flowers for a lack of word not stringing together doesn't bring the same feeling as a todukkal todukkal is a a certain beautiful art form we begin there we see the temple edifice we see the architecture the grandeur the scale of architecture you go to each panel and it has these beautiful sculptures which you can't take your eyes off you go in you have the fragrance you have camphor you have chandanam you have everything that is jumping out to you or you have the vibhuti whatever whichever temple you are going to and then you have this something called faith which is all around you which moves you and you are you talk about sensorial five senses somebody mentioned about the five senses i think this is beyond even the senses you go into the temple and then suddenly you see the darshanam or you see the sanctum sanctorum and it opens and there is this effulgence and you are transported to a different level of experience so you have the chanting you have the smell you have the feeling you have the visual experience you are soaked in everything and this is the culture we are coming from from architecture to ritual to
to sound, to music, to theater. This is theater at its best. And it's all integrated. How can you separate one from the other in this experience? How can we? And then in the school, you pack these children in these classes like this and say, compartmentalize each one of these things and say, when you're doing music, focus only in that. The music teacher has nothing to do with anything else. If you move too much in a music class, the music teacher will definitely say, don't move. Just stand there and sing. You can't even enjoy the music. So I just feel there is this sense of complete disconnect from our culture when we come to education. We seem to be viewing things only vis-a-vis -vis periods, vis-a-vis -vis syllabus, vis-a-vis -vis what we are supposed to do. We are not seeing it as a holistic. So the first thing in that school that I said is, from today, we say, I am a member of the performing arts department and I teach Kathak. This will be the introduction. Then I went on to see, I am talking from a very experience uh, of what I have experienced and sharing. I know all of you are great educators sitting here and have no right to actually be even lecturing this kind of a thing because you have all are heading schools and you have much more experience in this area. But what pains me as an artist when I go to a, 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 a space, because we, I come from a tradition of learning. My Swarna Saraswati Amma, my first teacher, she could sing a concert for three hours. She could give a fantastic Bharatanatyam recital for three hours. She could play the veena. She could compose. She was a linguist. And that's the kind of tradition we are coming from, where we were told that if you have to be an artist, you have to have all the exposure for each one of this, these uh, things. So when, you, when I started learning dance, the first thing I realized is dance is really the coming together of so many aesthetic experiences, whether it is philosophy, whether it's spirituality, whether it is poetry, whether it is mythology, whether it is beautiful uh, music, uh, rhythm, uh, yogic movements, aesthetic, aharya, Dance really is the coming together of each one of these aspects. And unless one soaks yourself or herself in each of these, I don't think you can become an artist. You can might be able to become a performer, but that even a circus uh, a, a person is a performer. But how does dance, Indian classical dance, how is it different? So the interdisciplinarity. See, you have to understand that Indian arts cannot be put into silos. You need to have a holistic understanding. That's why I think we, in our primary schools, we are very, very good with education, junior, junior section, which is the, um, you know, till class six, because there's always an activity teacher I have seen who actually knits all this together in many schools and sees everything. She does craft, she does little bit of action song, she does little bit of theater, she actually does all this. But the moment we come to class six, we ask the child, you have to choose one activity. What is your activity? And there it ends. If the child goes in for that one activity, the other activities are door shut, closed. So the first thing that we did in the school that I go to, and in many other schools where I have, we have a, a coordinator for the arts. And that person actually is the link between all the arts. And there are many uh, periods where all the children do come together and maybe they watch a film. Today with the click of a button, you have access to so much. So they watch a film and they're supposed to review the film. They're supposed to write about the film. When we say film, it could be, I mean, things like there is Bala Saraswati's film, which is made by, you know, none other than Satyajit Ray. And it is all available on a click of a button uh, on the YouTube. Now, isn't this fabulous coming together of a fabulous filmmaker making a film on a legend like Balama? Now, this gives food for thought for, uh, in so many levels of filmmaking, of artist who is who defines Bharatanatyam. So I think this kind of thing, and of course, arts writing, criticism, all this comes together when you put all of them together, watch a film and you discuss 
you discuss, discuss about the Devadasi system, you discuss about the appropriation of the arts, appropriation of the style, so many other things that go with the history of Bharatanatyam. You also go into Satyajitre, his tradition of making films and his connection with artists. He's made so many films on artists. So I think all this comes together. So this is integrated arts education. This is the kind of thing that we are looking for. It's all very well. I talked to Binesh and Binesh said, can't we teach some maths uh, uh, concepts through dance? Yes, those things we can do. But the learning outcomes of the arts, what are we expecting when a child or when a student leaves class 12? What do you expect? What should the arts education program do for the child? I simply believe there are two or three main points. One is a decent understanding about what Indian culture stands for. Two, a sense of pride in Indian culture. Three, if I play some music, if I play a Bihu music, should be able to identify and say, yes, this is from the Northeast and this is from this part of the country and this belongs to these, kind, these kinds of people who play it or sing it. At least this basic kind of things that India stands for and what is its tradition, whether it is folk, whether it is theatre traditions, whether it is uh, music traditions, whether it is the Bhakti Sangeet of, of this country, uh, Sufiana Kalam, to Baul music, to so many other things. Do we give that tool to them to identify all this and to appreciate all this and to understand the range that India stands for? I have not seen much going into arts education in this direction. I don't think we have a curriculum or we follow any kind of a structure that helps us do this kind of thing. Again, the same thing holds for visual arts. Do they really understand where Varli comes from or where Gond artists come from or where the Kolam tradition comes from. I think all these things are so beautiful. And unless we knit it all together and make events out of it, I think it's very hard to make this holistic connection and this interdisciplinary learning. The other thing that I experimented in the school was to make the performing arts teachers perform. Many times this teacher almost forgets that the teacher is a performer. Many times they're wonderful performers, but they have never performed for their students. So when you see the teacher performing, you know, suddenly the perspective changes and they were ready to kiss the ground on which the teacher walked because suddenly they see the teacher on stage performing. And it was a fabulous event and the whole perception of the students changed towards the teacher and they loved what they saw. So that was the other big change that I felt was very important to give that the teacher the feeling that never forget that you are a performer and that you should perform for your students and that inspires them much more than just going on talking, teaching. <laughs> the other thing that simple things which we introduced in the school was that during the assembly, after the assembly for 10 minutes every day, you play different kinds of music. Never talk about the music, but it would be played after the assembly and it would be up to the children to come up with curious questions as to what that instrument was or who was the player. But you just play. Like they say in the North, So this whole process of Kansen to become familiar with the sounds, the, the kind of music that India is capable of. I think that it was also a, a fabulous step towards uh, uh, you know, making the children aware. And today, now I think when they hear a certain instrument, whether it's the pakhavaj or they hear a uh, kartal, they will immediately say, this is a kartal. This is a pakhavaj. This is a nagada. You know, the identification of these beautiful instruments from various parts of the country. So I think these are very simple ways, of course, which I said, which... Um, 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 we at, in that school have introduced. And uh, at a personal level, 
I feel there is a lot of feeling amongst the young in India that the arts are something that they cannot understand, that it's something very complex, it's very complicated. And so many of the uh, teachers and students ask me, uh, how do we then motivate them in school to, uh, to how do you actually demystify? That's the question, but they don't use the same word, but they say, how do you kind of motivate them? So I think this demystifying the arts is very important. And again, I missed out one point when I was talking earlier about the interdisciplinarity that, uh, you know, normally you go to school, it's always you have a standard Saraswati Vandana or you have standard things. That again, we tried to change in that school by saying, bringing in the Sanskrit teacher, bringing in the Hindi teacher, making them sit with the musician, selecting poetry and verses from our tradition, setting it to music and teaching that through dance. So I think again, we brought together subject teachers as well and knitted them with the performing arts teachers so that they sit, even this dialogue does not happen, you know, uh, you, you, the resources which are there within the school are not explored by these arts teachers. So that's, I think, a very sad state where so much is possible even within the school with the resources that you have within the school. Having said that, you come to another important point of demystifying, which I talked about, where again, I think we need to make an effort to demystify the arts and to tell the children that the arts are not you have to actually view the arts through this mechanism of the heart, not through the brain. So when we go to the West, how many of them know about Krishna or Shiva or Devi or any of the Indian Tala cycles or the music? But how come they sit through a two and a half hour uh, recital and they are moved to tears or they come and say, what was this? So how does that happen? So we've always tried to wonder what is it that they perceive it and our children who are growing up in this milieu are not able to come out of their little uh, uh, you know, inhibitions and have built a wall around this whole thing and are not able to understand the beauty and the rasa that emanates out of music and dance. So I think in this direction, I've done a few things and I here I would like to share a little clip with you, which I have done uh, as an experiment. And uh, I'd like you to view this and then we can take it forward. Shiva, explanation of iconography. Shiva remains an eternal mystery. His duality is bewildering. On the one hand, he is Nirguna, without form, both omniscient and omnipresent. He is also Saguna, with form. And in this, he is often depicted as the vortex of the universe, the Nataraja, king of dancers. His dance depicting cosmic energy. The image of Nataraja is indeed very profound. It portrays the deity not as a static entity, but in kinetic animation, which could reflect equally the intercosmic dance of the galaxies or the subatomic dance of the neutrons. Shiva represents the proto male. His phallus, the lingam, is said to be the axis of the universe, the fount of regeneration. From destruction springs creation. Break to make. Break and make. 
break. Make the eternal story of creation as the Nataraja. His outstretched arms represent the twin forces of creation and destruction. In the one he holds a rattle drum. Representing the great sound, the Logos from which all creation springs. The Big Bang from which time and space both flash into being. Shiva's drum is the symbol of creative activity. In the other, Shiva holds fire, symbol of destruction, the inevitable counterpart of creation. The third hand in the Abhaya Mudra says, Do not fear. I shall protect as I shall destroy. And his fourth hand points to his raised foot, which in turn points to salvation, symbolic of the release from the spell of Maya. Shiva's other foot dances on the demon Apasmara Purusha, who represents our egos. Only by suppressing one's avidya, ego, can one attain the Godhead. Shiva's matted locks, a nimbus of straight lines curving in space, connote the complexities of human existence. These locks are crowned with the crescent moon, denoting the waxing and waning and the shifting of time. And from those locks sprouts the river goddess Ganga, representing eternity. Eternity and purity. The cobra snakes coiling on Shiva's arms, neck and body again represent vibrant and dynamic cosmic energy. The Kundalini, the power which resides at the base of the spine and which when aroused leads to the transmutation of consciousness. These snakes also represent change and adorned by these snakes Shiva presides over change. He wears a garland of skulls, a reminder that death comes to one and all. He also wears one male earring and another female earring, symbolizing the concept of Ardhanarishwara, the creative fusion of male and female entities into a single divinity. Shiva's third eye depicts him as a god who is all-seeing and wise. This is thus the seat of wisdom. Shiva opens his third eye to destroy evil. The circle of flames around Shiva both the arch of nature and the continuity and eternal motion of the universe through the paths of creation, preservation and destruction, the vast unending cycle. His vahana or vehicle is the bull, Nandi, symbol of strength and constancy. Shiva's consort is the radiant Parvati, the Earth Mother Goddess.
this was just an effort to demystify because as i said you know there is this feeling that this is the actual interdisciplinary thing you see a small sculpture you see the concept of Natar nataraja you see it in a in a in the temple you see it in the hotel you see it in the drawing room lying there but it's actually teaching you life skills it's teaching you how to get through life so this connection is i think very important and the other thing i feel is which again is a huge there are two or three mandates that i think principals particularly can attempt to do which is one is you have arts appreciation sessions for non arts teachers you need it for your physics teacher for your chemistry teacher for your maths teacher for your all your other subject teachers they need to understand arts as well because the status of arts can be raised or the respectability can be brought only when everybody understands the depth of the arts everybody understand what the arts can do to you to get through life i think the pandemic has taught us everybody in the pandemic there's nobody who has not turned to the arts for uh, de-stressing themselves or picked up a book read a poetry listened to music moved around to dance to any kind of music what else can you do how do you de-stress when you are locked down in the house so i think the importance of the arts has never been more i think been in the forefront of things as much as it has been during the pandemic i've got so many requests where uh people wanted people who are non dancers wanted to move during the pandemic they wanted workshops non dancers wanted workshop they just wanted something through which they could physically explore and you know uh, in a sense it it could be catharsis so dance is not just a performing art it has many many different dimensions to it and people learn the art form for different reasons it's not only to perform it is to as i said de stress it can be catharsis for some people it's this aesthetics that draws them into the arts for some other thing it's the poetry that draws for some somebody else it's the music somebody else it's the rhythm uh, for somebody else it's healing so i think dance has music has so many different aspects to it and this is what we need to give the children so that whatever they do they take the process of learning something beautiful in the arts which they keep with themselves and they another thing which i'd like to say is that everything in life we do for stakes if i do this exam clear this exam will i get a job if i do this will i get that i think the arts can be one space which you do for yourself you don't do it with any stakes you do it for the joy of learning the joy of experience the joy of process so i think there should be something in life which you do without without stakes so i think when i learned the arts i never thought i was going to be a dancer i learned it because i enjoyed it i just went on exploring it more and more and at one point i decided that i should come to this full time so something in i think in life you you don't have to prove yourself to anybody you don't have to clear any exams you do it for the joy of just being engaged in something beautiful so i think i have exceeded my time a lot i uh since i'm a teacher i can go on and on i talk a lot uh, but uh, i think i'd like to at this point um, kind of uh, uh hand it over to so i think these are the basic broad ideas that uh, i'd like to share with all of you because and the other stakeholders as i have said in that school which we have to be in, in constant dialogue with is parents because there are many children who are exceptional in the arts but there's parental pressure to not take up the arts so i think constant dialogue with the parent community i think is very important to support the arts so that's the other thing that uh, we've been trying out in that school to uh, encourage the arts because there's one girl when i initially talked about the arts she came and she said uh, my parents actually broke the guitar in the house and um, i am not able to pursue something so beautiful 
in spite of doing well in my academics. And that's the other thing. The moment they slide in academics, they say, I will, I will stop your dance class. And that's the sure way for the next exam to go further down. Because if you deny the child what the child is interested in and what the child loves to do, I think the further decline goes. And my experience has been in my dance class that uh, even before a board exam, children come and dance so that they de-stress and go. So dance, music have to become part of life. You don't have to see it as an activity just outside life. This is how we proceeded. And I think that's the beauty of it where it integrates with what you do. It's not something that is acquired out from outside and you go there and you just do it and go. No, you need to do this to do other things. That would be the way I would like to view the arts. I think over to Binesh. <laughs> okay, ma'am. And uh, first of all, um, uh, as a resika, I should uh, appreciate that, that piece you just uh, uh, demonstrated uh, Lord Shiva, Nadaraja, everything about Nadaraja, that was mind-blowing, ma'am. And I have a lot of things in my mind now. So whether I should uh, ask you about the issues in this part or should I uh, ask you about the scope of integrating art in uh, curriculum? So things have been, you know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, ma'am, in between, um, uh, we were expect, we were, uh, you were exp uh, telling about the interdisciplinary part. So, and in a school, all the resources are there. A music teacher will be there, a dance teacher will be there. A physics teacher who is a dancer will be there. A math teacher who is a musician will be there. So CBSE says about the interdisciplinary or art integration is like, then why don't these resources could be used to teach a particular part of or a particular topic in science, to teach a particular topic in chemistry? So we people are, I mean, dancers, uh, we say that when we express bhava, the rasa is generated or uh, rasa is experienced by the resiga. So it's like that. So why don't we use the skill of a dance teacher or a music teacher to give that experience of rasa uh, while explaining some concepts of uh, other, other subjects? So do you think uh, uh, it is not needed uh, um, when we think about the teaching art uh, in schools or won't, won't, it, won't it be doing something good in supporting or encouraging the children to have a positive attitude towards dance or art, music or some kind of art forms. So what is your opinion in this matter? I think there's already a lot of work being done to uh, teach the formal uh, curriculum or the formal concepts in um, say physics or maths or something like that through the arts. But, um, but it's very difficult to come across people who know both disciplines. You might be a rare species who are a physics teacher knowing dance. So it's difficult to come across. In fact, it is even difficult to have people proficient in one discipline who are completely immersed in that and to find people with two disciplines uh, and to sit, do you have the liberty of time and that kind of energy within with given the structures of the school uh, to really do this kind of a thing because this is a full subject in itself and we need to come up with curriculums uh, for this separately and I know in the west a lot of work has already been done how to integrate dance how to teach geometry uh, through the the use of the body uh, uh, and the, the the you know the, the the choreography that you do how do you use or you use an elastic band and stretch and do the work. So these kinds of things have been already done. And, um, and also a lot of the EVS, if you see in the lower classes, there's lots of EVS things which are taught uh, through poetry and through movement uh, in uh, the junior school. And that also works very well. But my problem is that the, you can come up with very, very wonderful curriculum because I was part of the curriculum framework of the NCERT. Uh, in the 90s, you, we came up with fabulous curriculum, but who is going to teach it? Do you have trained teachers? You know, the basic thing after all this comes to, I sit through panels of selection of dance teachers and my, my heart bleeds because uh, you don't find the people, uh, the arts, you know? So I think the first thing we need to invest is in a proper institute where this kind of interdisciplinary understanding of the arts is taught to teachers. 
to, for them to understand what is arts teaching in schools. We just any any teacher with no training just comes in to teach art. You know there is no formal understanding. So now in many of the schools where um, many of my teach my my students are also involved in coming up with curriculums for arts education, they are made to sit in the scholastic classes. And the scholastic teachers are made to sit in the dance and music and theater classes. Unless this happens and this cross pollination happens, I think it's very difficult to really do what you are saying. Where do you find those hyphens? Where do you find those synergies? You find those synergies and it has to come from the teachers. So the arts teachers have to sit in the scholastic. The child's mind is the same. A class two student doesn't differentiate periods. You are making the periods different for the child. The child has one brain and the child doesn't know you are creating subjects, you are creating teachers, you are creating experts, but the child is viewing it all in one head. So you need to view from that perspective. And that's why each teacher must be aware as to what's happening before, after, what are the lessons going on? And what has, she, what has the child finished and come to me? What has been the earlier period? What is the continuity? What is that, that thing which is happening in the head? So we have many, many things that are going on now, exciting things. I think also we don't have platforms in India where we share best practices. We need to have platforms where we share bed practices. We are always reinventing the wheel. In education, I think there's so much happening in India, but we don't seem to be able to share it. So we also need, I think this could be a great platform. I think I can give you three or four best practices, people who can come and talk to all of you and you could maybe take from there because that is where I think, like for example, there is this beautiful, fabulous architect in India who actually makes the school itself a teaching tool. He creates a school where everything is a teaching tool. Where the staircase mm -hmm. is having the multiplication tables, where something else hanging is actually talking about the physics, uh, something that is to do with physics. So a door is actually the measuring uh, thing is already on the door. So every little thing in the school is a learning tool. So there's so much happening already in India, but we don't seem to be as, as I said, sharing it so that in your own circumstance and in your own environment, you could see what you could adapt and use. So I think I've vaguely answered your question. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes. And uh, see, to add to that, so my question was, suppose if I'm a, I'm a physics teacher who may be uh, knowing little bits in dance, but that doesn't matter if a subject teacher doesn't know uh, um, any kind of art. We have art teachers in our school. So when they design their pedagogy for teaching physics or chemistry or English or Max or Mariana or whatever, so if they can seek the help of that uh, art teachers, then I think that would, um, of course, give a more relevant importance, respect to that art teachers also in the school. For example, I'm telling, so when I was, since I know dance, I could do this. When I was teaching ankles in uh, um, fifth standard mathematics, I uh, sat in Aramanti, in the correct position and I asked them to find out the angles and all in my body which are the acute angles and obtuse angles like that. So uh, in teaching mathematics we could have we could, I could use that uh, a small portion of Bharatanatyam and I mentioned it very clear this is Bharatanatyam this is Aramanti position like that. So the children would be getting known about Bharatanatyam yeah it is a dance form it is like that and you were also demonstrating that so I was thinking yeah to teach big, big bang theory when teachers teach about Big Bang Theory, why don't this particular kind of demonstration could be shown? So they will be, so like that. Even when you show Jingle Jingle Little Star, we can use that uh, mudras and all. And you, you should you should particularly say that this is by Bharatanatyam, but we are doing this Jingle Jingle and all. So that kind of pedagogy, that kind of methods could be used. So what is your opinion? That's the ideal thing. But uh, the, again, as I said, you know, to have a physics teacher who is open to the idea of even integrating dance, the mind space is not there as of now. A physics teacher is a dreaded person. You know, at least my physics teacher was a dreaded person. I, I, I would only go to the lab when I needed to. So that kind of openness, the, the, the person has to have rasa firstly. You know, the person has to be open to all this kind of interdisciplinary. And I find there's a lot of hesitation amongst teachers to open up to the arts. 
you know they don't under, they themselves have not experienced the arts they don't understand the potential of arts that's why i'm saying you need arts appreciation courses to be done for the teachers the scholastic teachers you need to bring them on board you need to make them understand what the ad arts can do to a person and they themselves have to first become rasikas unless they are rasikas they are not going to understand what is the possibility with the arts so we are now talking of a, of of a scenario where the arts teacher feels very very marginalized and alone yes you need to strengthen the hands of the arts teachers and you say that you know you you you, you are capable of doing so much can you we can we sit and over a cup of coffee discuss this kind of thing i am teaching this do you think this has any resonance in your art form or in any form of music or any form of tala cycles or any kind of percussion when you are playing uh, suddenly a tisram is being played and a, a mishram and a khandam are set in the tisram how is that mathematics happening how is the you know the the whole uh, divisibility how do they work out uh, so these kinds of possibilities have to be the dialogue has to first begin you have to you have to facilitate the dialogue i think the dialogue itself is not happening right now yes ma'am and uh, see we, we we know that this primary kids they, they are not reluctant to watch or to absorb or to appreciate any of this kind of art forms so you were mentioning just like in assembly you just you used to in some schools you used to listen them make them listen some kind of music without telling anything about that so can you share some more ideas like that to to develop this kind of respect towards art artist and culture for from primary level first standard onwards what are other kinds of things could be done in the school oh, the, the listening part of it is very very important i think and to have them view because today you know every i think many many schools have smart classes etc so i think viewing a, a folk form and talking about it or trying to imitate a movement after seeing a folk a folk dance or trying to understand if you are from the south to understand instead of just saying that everything north of the vindhyas is punjabi you actually sing a song from some other dialect it could be a bhojpuri or it could be a, a maithili or it could be a rajasthani uh, at least make them understand that we are rich vis-a-vis -vis the soundscape we don't have to tell them it's rajasthani but you say this is from the north of india and this is a beautiful tradition or you you know yesterday i was actually playing the kartal for a little child and it's so fascinated you know it started doing this all the time and it's you know the the kind of movement they do exaggerated movement so it's it's so wonderful that these things really engage the child all the large drums that we have in uh, haryana when they dance they bang it you know these are the things you need to play for them you need to make them watch and they surely take from it and you know they really learn from it so instead of you know like i remember in my uh, junior school all i did was i had a kathak teacher and all i did was ta te te tat a te it was so boring you know why are we getting into technique at that time i don't have to understand or make them understand this is kathak this is it's only movement at that point exploring body exploring eyes exploring the hands exploring the feet why do we have to break it up into bharatanatyam and kathak and x y z at that time it's not important it's first to understand your body understand posture understand limbs understand eyes understand communication so i think you know this kind of again it's the thing of specialization we come down to break down everything to specialization you know uh, when you were teaching the angles it was not even necessary at that time to tell them about bharatanatyam you tell them about the body possibility how the body embodies geometry okay right hmm. so that, okay later you know ah. the understanding of the styles etc comes later but the fact initially i think in the junior school is all about exploration it's all about curiosity you show them one drum tradition they must be able to go home and say what are the other drum traditions i want to listen to drums what are the other drums what are the other possibilities how do you, do you play it like this do you play it like this do you play it like this how do you play the drums how is is it played with a hand is it played with a stick is it played with a with a ball kind of a thing so that curiosity has to be kind of brought in and uh, i think that we kill curiosity we systematically kill curiosity 
which is a sad situation i feel we need to spark of that 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 enthusiasm and curiosity yes ma'am and one more question uh, regarding the same thing only because uh, just like art integration cbsc uh, focus on a method a pedagogy that is storytelling so for a malayalam english or hindi or especially language teachers they would be coming across going across a lot of stories so uh, why why don't these teachers at least you know some of the the um, um, members also are participating in the session they would be having these art teachers in their school and uh, so why don't these language teachers uh, get the association of these art teachers to present things using dance as a story presentation of a story uh, in lang- at least in language teach i think it's very good the great idea and uh, when you teach a language i think it's it's and the vocabulary can be so beautifully explained uh with the use of the the hastas and the the facial expressions and um, communicating so much i think the dance teacher uh, could do a great job uh, vis-a-vis the storytelling because that's what we do we tell stories we experience and uh, you know um, explicitly bring out characters so in that i think uh, the it's definitely important that the the storytelling and you know the storytelling becomes much more interesting when you use um uh, the 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 body and the face and uh, everything and the connections you know the suddenly uh, one look they would recognize and recognize it and associate it with a mood or a word so i think those kind of associations can be easily established when the storytelling is done through dance it's a great idea Thank you, thank you so much, ma'am. And to all the participants, you may please fill the feedback form which is given in the. Uh, questions can be uh, questions are expected from the participant side to ask any questions to ma'am and to have to get the answer. Somebody is there. Yes, <coughs> they can raise their hand, Binesh. Uh, I think someone their... has done it. Uh, someone, Bimlesh, uh, Sahar, and someone has raised their hand. Anna Lakshmi. Excuse me, Radha Krishnan sir. Yeah. So many have praised her. Ah, uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Bimle, she can. You can ask questions. Uh, uh, there is no doubt as such i just wanted to add to the information that uh, sudha ma'am just uh, mentioned yes we have to give enough uh, scope to the uh, scope and freedom to the teachers that they are able to explore whatever maximum they can with the young children and that can only and second thing i want to say that we are right now i'm basically dealing with the junior wing of my school so uh, right now we are uh, most of the schools are concentrating on picking up young generation young people although it is with young, uh, see it is the agility of the a teacher that makes sense when we are uh, uh, when we are bringing in the teacher with the young children but definitely the experience that she has brings a lot and lot of um, you know knowledge and wisdom in her teaching when she is with the young children so i completely agree that uh, teachers need to give need to have enough freedom plus need to have a more or more and more of creativity when dealing with the children thank you so much ma'am for your uh, uh, valuable inputs and your good self uh, bring, coming to us uh, to the layman you can say community thank you so much for your presence thank you ma'am then next so many have raised their hands so many questions for you ma'am
who's going to ask? Next one, who is the next one? I think you, you can unmute and ask. Unmute it. Please. So Anna Lishmi can talk. Now she can unmute yourself. We can talk. And uh, Binwan sir, that link, uh, is it not uh, shared? A link will be shared, link will be shared. Okay, Anna Lakshmi. Why nobody is unmuting and uh, asking the questions, sir? Vaishali Shetty. You can ask right now. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, ma'am. It's pleasure to see your performance. And we are overwhelmed, actually, to see your performance. And uh, I felt like uh, we have rich culture in our India. And we, as a teacher, we are not aware of so many things. So thank you. It's uh, really pleasure to see you. Uh, only my thing is, like, even we have to want to do so many things with the children. But still, we are born to syllabus, timings, everything. How to, uh, sometimes we feel like um, where we can help our children, how we can help our children. So I teach primary class. I see if I actively participate with them with expressions or if I give it. But somewhere I feel like where, how can I help to the maximum level to encourage with these all bonds, timing, uh, with the syllabus. We have a lot of pressure also. So can you help, can you give some tips to the teachers? Uh, I think constant upgradation for the teachers is very important because I've seen many schools investing uh, in upgradation and to help to bring in like, you know, people um, who uh, are working in the education sector and they come for a program with the uh, teachers and they sit and chat and that really gives you uh, some amount of help in terms of um, reorganizing yourself, looking inwards and seeing what you can do better. And I think dialogue is the only thing. You need to dialogue much more and see how you can optimize time. And uh, in that particular school where I have I have been kind of experimenting, they actually increase the time of the school by about 40 minutes so that the arts curriculum could be really given importance. So I think some changes can also be made sometimes, or you can, uh, many schools have after school programs where they have for children who are really interested, they stay back and do they do arts and uh, they invest much more time in it because we realize that within the school time, you cannot create artists. You can only create recitals. You can identify talent and you can go and tell the parents, this child is ex exceptionally talented. Please, uh, you, you, are, you have the great job of identifying talent. Yes, because you are the people who are spending so much time with the children. If the child is extraordinary in something, I think you must call it out and you must tell the parents that this child is extraordinary and she needs to go to a proper guru or a teacher and take uh, mm. a special training. But I think given the school constraints and given whole time and the syllabus and everything you can only make rasikas out of them you can't create great artists in school within the school structure mili sankal mili <coughs> mili you may please come Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, it's a wonderful session by ma'am. We learn a lot of things here. But as an activity in charge in my school, I want to know that what can I do for my students to integrate all the classes together with all subjects and with art integration also so they can come up with one activity or some one program so students can also learn what uh, how they learn the subjects with art integration. 
this is the entire session what i have talked about <laughs> you know uh, there are no easy solutions for all this you need to uh, in your own circumstance find out and you know find those as i said connections with the other teachers this is not an what something you can do all by yourself being in activity you need to dialogue with your other teacher colleagues and teachers because uh, you 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 are asking a question which is really the the focus of this whole evening's uh, deliberation as to you you talked about arts education you talked about integration you talked about teaching syllabus through the arts and that's exactly the three things that we are trying how to kind of break it up and do it so i think the first thing is dialogue and as as i said you must know what the child is doing in the other subjects what are the course uh, scholastic things that the child is doing and then find the connections as to where the arts can inter intersect and where the arts can be brought in and help the child in making a holistic understanding of a certain concept okay thank you ma'am so who is next smita smita ma'am ma'am ma very good evening ma'am it was a wonderful session today uh it was really enthralling for us uh, uh having a great personality like you in the session uh i just want to put it down like uh, uh recently i just had a, a experience with my children uh for uh, i just told them there is a poem is there okay you have got a english poem you need to um depict the poem through a dance i just gave a one uh, a hint for the class i could find uh, around uh, three to uh, the four students they just uh, uh, they um, collaborated on an online session and they uh, came out with a, a performance very fantastic uh, it is a small poem so they were able to do it so well now how to nurture it i want this to be nurtured for other session uh, sections and other children uh, how to go about this uh, you have any um, points to help us on no what are the other sections unless i know what are you other talking? section is uh, i'm just talking about the other grade other grade levels like now i dealt with uh, standard 6 grade and these children are dancers by themselves so uh, the three children they together they came up with this one and they uh, uh, depicted that particular poem in the form of a dance now how to cultivate this particular practice uh, across i it just you know it came as a flow in the class so i just put it across to the children now that has been that poem is learned very well and very well expressed and everybody learned it in a uh, very nice way the internal meaning is understood by the children now how to go about with the other sessions whether uh, i have to ask the children to uh, practice this one continuously how to go about have any suggestions on it this this is a process and this cannot become like a, a one time thing and you know now the same poem three people have done it in a certain way take another three people and ask them to do it in some other way this is not the only way the poem can be interpreted right our dances are all about manodharma so you have to within that idea what are the other ideas so these three have done it a certain way that's fine that is not set in stone now you don't need to see practice this all the time the whole thing is create a fresh now the same poem can be done in 20 different ways um, a particular line in abhinaya we do it every day in a different way so the poem is there as only a base you need to interpret it in your own way in every possible way it has to be explored you know it has to be explored vertically horizontally diagonally you have to go every which way that the poem tree can be can it be contemporized can be can it be put in another context can it be viewed differently you have to sit with your uh, english teacher and understand the poem and its possibilities you have to then explore it through whatever medium dance or through music or or you just play a violin and you you read the poem and leave it don't do don't don't uh, make it into an action song 
you read the poem take the content of the poem import of the poem and ask a violinist to play or a flutist to play and you explore the movement expand the concept of the poem so many ways of doing it it's not one 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 size fits all you have to no, be creative no. Uh, yeah yes ma'am i uh, i got it i'm sorry i'm just uh, stopped in between sorry. Um, yes, sorry it's a question of using this medium and its possibilities to be yeah. fullest right yes ma'am yes ma'am um, ma'am in the uh, uh, in this junction i just want to ask you because as we know that art integration we are just bringing it to your classroom it uh, through the various subjects yes and how whether i am just restricting the art forms to uh, i am not restricting it to, to the one particular child or who knows art i mean how did know uh, to dance and depict or something like that or the child who knows uh, music um, they can sing it uh, sing the song well something like that ma'am but my question is whether how to um, uh, i can elaborate the horizon to other children how to how am i going to reach out to the other children i want to bring them into this particular uh i said it's a process you can suddenly not in class 7 class 8 decide that you know somebody is not dancing you better start dancing it's not like that you know some people are easy with the dance process the other person can do a sketch i'll tell you a story i just had one of my students coming up to me and saying there was this one boy who never entered the dance class and my student was actually teaching and um, she reached out to him and said why aren't you coming into the dance class so the boy said the earlier teacher of dance teacher had told me not to enter the class there must have been some altercation and she must have been some discipline issue and she said that don't enter the class so this boy was not entering the class so she said she sat with the boy and she said what is the problem don't you like to dance so he said no i don't like to dance so then she said what are you good at what do you like doing he he said i like to sketch so she said from next class you will come to the dance class but you will only sketch the dancers so he started sketching the dancers and i believe it's quality the quality of the sketch is so good that he's presented one sketch to every student dance student now this is integration now you don't look for a dancer in a not dancer you look how he can appreciate the art of dance through his medium which is painting which is sketching now i thought this was a brilliant exercise where actually he was watching dance was part of the dance process but he was expressing it through his medium yes ma'am you are correct i got it what is very very important this is the intelligence of the teacher this is the skill of the teacher this is the the presence of mind and the 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 kind of uh, approach that the teacher has you can't force a, a, a person to do something in today's day and age but you still want not to deny the child of the experience of the dance class so he is part of the dance class but you're not forcing him to dance because he doesn't feel comfortable in that genre so you make him integrate into the dance section by doing what he, he likes to do i think it was a, it is a brilliant example thank you ma'am thank you very much okay thank you ma'am i think the time is up for questions more uh, we will be getting more such uh, opportunities later by panchatantra planet to have interaction uh, like uh, this uh, from uh, legendary uh, people like you ma'am and uh, i would like to point out a few things from your talk ma'am one thing is a teacher should be intelligent so what all things we say a teacher should be intelligent enough to integrate the art form with the subject and the second one the dialogue should happen each and every teacher should talk each and every teacher should have that collaboration with the, i mean uh, not uh, art teacher or the subject teacher should have that collaboration and a science teacher should have that generous mind to invite a art teacher or dance teacher to her classroom or his classroom to explain a particular concept using dance then all the teachers would be having equal importance you cannot say that uh, art teachers would be sidelined uh, a special uh, but non considered category in the school it's like that uh, and vinish sir yes for the entire kamrajini here uh, can i get one minute to talk with ma'am sir yeah yeah uh, yes ma'am yes please after you you just to finish it sir after that i'll talk <laughs> okay okay ma'am and uh, see we say 
uh, artists like you know food for the mind because uh, when I, if my mind is healthy then our uh, behavior our attitude everything will be perfect so uh, um, um, when we integrate art with the subjects and from your talk ma'am from deepa uh, uh, ma'am's talk um, i understood more important is teaching art not using art in teaching that is what i understood that art as the subject itself should, should be introduced and taught to the uh, children and art um, it carries uh, the parampara the culture from generation to generation so that should be introduced to students as such it is in a way nice uh, nice experience ma'am uh, i think all the teachers all all the members who participate in the session uh, they really they are enlightened in this subject and we are expecting more and more from you uh, hereafter so thank you so much ma'am and now camera ji ma'am please um, namaskaram ma'am i am so happy i am handling uh, social science for 10th and 12th uh, economics i am working in binusar school binumon sir school and uh, uh, actually i am so happy ma'am this is the thing what it is needed for the material world by this art integration we are taking the indian mass at least to know about the tradition and all of the thing basically i am a dancer ma'am i done my phd in education and i am doing my phd i about to submit my thesis in emotional intelligence and dance i am utilizing my entire art in my teaching ma'am the teachers are asking a question really we can't separate the art from the teaching when we enter the class good morning children that itself a dance what i see that itself a dance yeah as binish sir is blessed with that as a physics teacher he can't separate his physics with the and adavu aramandi and the actions and i can teach all the landforms my fingers i'll say this is mountain this is valley this is plain this is plateau why can't we do it the flowing of wind it is not needed dance a teacher all the 10 fingers can do wonders so i feel so happy ma'am this art integration introduced by cbsc had stop to the hearts and i am so much of pranam to you ma'am to progressing this art because uh, we can do wonders it is not the thing one i saw one question in the chat box that how can a teacher shows the moments like you emotions like you everyone is a artist when we start move when we start move it is the dance started from the uterus isn't it ma'am a small yeah 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 the day of birth itself it started moving very beautifully you shown the creation of big bang theory it is possible for all the teachers it is possible for all the teachers the thing is you use the beautiful word the ego should go out as vinish sir said and the mind space and one teacher asked now how can i expand one teacher knows that let her call the others and we too collaborative teaching what the cbsc aim for collaborative teaching is there without the ego we can fill the campus with full artist man thank you so much pranam pranam so much of pranam to you to enhance this art man thank you so much man thank you kamrajini miss mr manoj joshi has his masters in physics education and business administration and he has worked as a physics teacher in prestigious residential and day schools of uttarakhand haryana and himachal pradesh presently he is working as principal of vair dhara global school dhanot kangra in himachal pradesh i would like to invite him for uh, delivering word of thanks sir please uh, thank you so much avinash sir uh, namaskar uh, good evening everyone Uh, it is an honor to present a vote of thanks for today's session uh, today's session under panchatantra planets integration series on topic arts in education by uh, padmashri geeta chandran ji has been absolutely enlightening the way she explained essence of art education it's simply unparalleled her contribution to performing arts all of us know is legendary but her pride for indian arts and culture is so inspiring all participants including myself are grateful to geeta chandran ji for the video about nataraja she uh, shared with us today uh, the way she put across idea of interdisciplinary approach it's certainly going to be of great help to all the participants 
the idea of using whole school as a teaching tool is a great call uh, to all the educators to make learning a joy. On behalf of Panchatantra Planet, I express my heartfelt thanks to Geeta Chandranji. Uh, beyond doubt, a teacher like her is always there to provide intellectually enriching experience to her students and audience, uh, be it on dance stage or be it in an online session like this. Thank you so much session. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for being in this session. We are grateful to you. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, Mr. Vinesh Menon for his welcome address for moderating today's session in a, a skillful uh, manner. Uh, the program has been very effective. Thanks to you, uh, Vinesh, sir. I'm thankful to all board of directors of Panchantra Planet for organizing uh, this amazing session. I have to thank Mr. Robinson, a technical person for managing Zoom platform during the session. Last but not the least, a big thank you to everyone, uh, the school leaders, teachers, parents and students out there in audience who have participated in today's uh, program. I believe it has been an enriching experience for all of us. Thanks to Padmashri Geeta Chandranji. Uh, I would like to request all the participants to kindly fill the feedback form if you have not uh, filled it yet. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, over to you, Vinesh, sir. Thank you. And uh, the fourth episode of this integration series, the session has been dispersed. Thanks to everyone once again, and please fill the feedback form for getting the certificate correctly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, ma'am. Geeta, ma'am. Thank you, Geeta, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, Geeta, ma'am. Thank you so much. Manoj, sir. Thank you so much. It was wonderful. Thank you so much, sir. It's been an honor to be here and it was a great learning experience. Yeah. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Mirish, sir. went beyond my expectation again. <laughs> We'll talk in person. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now we'll meet again on Saturday, right? Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. I will be creating the WhatsApp group today itself. If possible, most probably today itself.